Hi, I'm Morgan, and today I'm excited to read to you from Grace Harlow's junior year at high school, which was written by a woman named Josephine Chase, who wrote under the pseudonym Jessie Graham Flower. Chapter 18, The Plays the Thing. Excitement ran high in the three lower classes one morning in early February when Miss Thompson requested that those interested in the production of a Shakespearean play go to the library directly after school, there to discuss the situation. When the gong sounded dismissal, about sixty girls with dramatic aspirations made for the library. The Phi Sigma Tau entered in a body. They had decided at recess to carry away as many laurels as possible, providing they could get into the cast. Miss Tebbs, teacher of elo elocution, Miss Kane, teacher of gymnastics, and Miss Thompson stood at one side of the library, talking earnestly as they noted each newcomer. Oh, look, whispered Jessica, clutching Nora's arm. There is Eleanor and her crowd. Then look out for squalls, replied Nora. She'll try to be the whole cast, and will get a magnificent case of sulks if she can't have her own way. Shh warned Eva Allen. She'll hear you. Besides, Miss Thompson is going to speak. The principal held up her hand for silence, and the groups of girls engaged in subdued conversation ceased talking and turned their attention toward her. You are all aware that each year the senior class gives a play, which they choose, manage, and produce with no assistance save that given by Miss Tubbs, said the principal. So far, the three lower classes have never given a play. Some time ago, Miss Tubbs suggested that, as we need money for special books in the library, which our yearly appropriation does not cover, we might present a Shakespearean play with good effect, choosing the cast from the freshman, sophomore, and junior classes. The first thing to be thought of is the play itself. After due consideration, we decided that, as you like it, is better suited to our needs than any of the other Shakespearean dramas. In it are 21 speaking characters, besides numerous lords, pages, and attendants. We shall probably use about 50 girls, thus making it an elaborate production. By the attendance this afternoon, I should imagine that you are heartily in favor of our project and that we shall have no trouble in making up the cast. As Miss Tubbs has charge of the situation, I yield the floor to her. She will explain to you about giving the par she will explain to you about the giving out of the parts. There was an enthusiastic clapping of hands as Miss Thompson smiled and nodded to the girls, then left the room. Miss Tubbs then stated that on Friday afternoon after school, there would be a tryout for parts in the gymnasium in order to find out what girls were most capable of doing good work in the cast. Just what the test would be had not been decided. It would be well, however, to study the chosen play and become familiar with it. Also, each girl must bring a copy of the play with her. If the girls wished to ask any questions, she would answer them as far as possible. Miss Kane would help with the posing and coaching when the thing was fairly started. The girls crowded around Miss Tabs and Miss Kane, asking all sorts of questions. One at a time, girls, laughed Miss Tabs. I have not asked you to enact a mob scene. Under cover of the confusion, Grace and her three friends slipped out of the library. The play's the thing, quoted Nora, and me for it. That is for the judges to decide, said Jessica sagely. Perhaps they won't even look at you. Do you think anyone could see my Irish countenance and fail to be impressed, demanded Nora. Really and truly, Nora, the more you travel with Hippie, the more you talk like him, remarked Grace. I consider that a compliment, replied Nora, laughing. Hippie says awfully funny things. Look at our little Anne, said Jessica. She is actually dreaming. Tell us about it, dear. I was thinking of the play, said Anne dreamily. I do so want to part, if only a little one. You'll be chosen for Rosalind, see if you aren't, predicted Grace. Oh no, said Anne. Someone else will be sure to get that. Besides, I'm too short. But Anne, you've had stage experience, said Jessica. You ought to, you ought to get it. Not in a Shakespearean play, replied Anne, shaking her head. I might not do well at all with that kind of part. Never fear, you'll be the star before you know it, said Nora. By Friday, there was nothing on the school horizon save the cherished play. Before school, at recess, and even in classes it was the topic of the hour. To the eager girls, the day seemed particularly long, and a heartfelt sigh went up when the dismissal gong rang. As for the four, 
as the four chumps hurried toward the gymnasium and suddenly caught Grace by the arm with a faint gasp of surprise. Glancing quickly down at her friend to ascertain the cause of Anne's sudden agitation, Grace saw her friend's eyes following the figure of a tall, distinguished-looking man who was just disappearing down the corridor leading to the, gymna to the gymnasium. "'What's the matter, Anne?' asked Grace. "'Do you know that man?' "'No,' replied Anne. "'But I know who he is. "'He must be a remarkable person, "'considering the way you gasped and clutched me,' laughed Grace. "'The man is Everett Southard, the great Shakespearean actor,' said Anne, almost reverently. "'I saw him in Hamlet, and his acting is wonderful.' "'No wonder you were surprised,' said Grace. It fairly takes my breath. I've seen ever so many pictures of him and read magazine articles about him. What do you suppose he is doing in a hotel and at the high school of all places? Time will tell, said Nora. Then she suddenly clasped her hands. Oh, girls, I know. He is here for the tryout. Why, of course he is, exclaimed Grace. Now I remember Miss Tubb showed me a magazine picture of him one day last year and told me that she had known him since childhood. Besides, he's playing a three-night engagement in Albany. I read it in the paper last night. It's as plain as can be. Miss Tubbs has asked him to run up here and pick out the cast. Good gracious, said Jessica. I shall retire in confusion if he looks at me. I won't dare aspire to a part now, and I had designs in the part of Phoebe. Don't be a goose, said Nora. He's only a man. He can't hurt you. I think having him here will be a lark. Won't some of the girls put on airs, though? There he is, talking with Miss Tubbs now. The girls entered the gymnasium to find there, to find there nearly all of those who had attended the first meeting in the library, increased by about a score of girls who decided at the last minute to try for parts. Eleanor stood at one end of the great room with Edna Wright and Daisy Culver. Grace thought she had never seen Eleanor looking more beautiful. She was wearing a fur coat and hat far too costly for a schoolgirl and carried a huge muff. Her coat was thrown open, disclosing a perfectly tailored gown of brown with the trimmings of dull gold braid. She was talking animatedly and her two friends were apparently hanging on every word she uttered. No wonder Eleanor has an opinion of herself, said Nora. Look at Daisy and Edna. They act as though Eleanor were the Sultan of Turkey, or the Shah of Persia, or some other high and mighty dignitary. They almost grovel before her. Never mind, Nora, said Grace. As long as you retain your Irish independence, what do you care about what other girls do? I don't care, only they do act so silly, said Nora, with a sniff of, with a sniff of contempt. Shh said Jessica softly. Miss Tebbs is going to call the meeting to order. A hush fell over the assembled girls as Miss Tebbs stepped forward to address them. I am very glad to see so many girls here, she said. It shows that you are all interested in the coming play. Although you cannot all have parts, I hope that you will feel satisfied with the selection made this afternoon. In order that each member of the cast may be chosen on her merit alone, my old friend, Mr. Southard, kindly consented to come from Albany for the sole purpose of giving us the benefit of his great Shakespearean experience. Allow me to introduce Mr. Everett Southard. He was greeted with a round of applause, and after bowing his thanks, the eminent actor plunged at once into the business at hand. He spoke favorably of the idea of an all-girl cast, saying that each year many girls as colleges presented Shakespearean plays with marked success. The main thing to be considered was the intelligent delivery of the great dramatist's lines. The thing to do would be to find out what girls could most ably portray the various characters. It would be most... It would be necessary to try each girl separately with a few lines from the play. In order to facilitate matters, he suggested that those girls who really desired speaking parts step to one side of the room, while those who, me who wished merely to make the stage pictures step to the other. Out of the 80 girls, about 35 only stepped over to the side from which the principal characters were to be chosen. Many of the girls had no serious intentions whatever regarding the play, and the awe inspired by Mr. Southard's presence made them too timid to venture t to open their mouths before him. Jessica, whose courage had fled, would have been among the latter if Nora had not seized her firmly by the arm as she prepared to flee and marched her over with the rest of the Phi Sigma Tau. Eleanor and Edna Wright were among the junior contestants, while there was a good showing of sophomores and freshmen. Mr. Southard took in the aspirations with keen, comprehensive glance. 
His eyes rested a shade longer on Eleanor. She made a striking picture as she stood looking with apparent indifference at the girls about her. Then his quick eye traveled to Grace's fine face and graceful figure, and then on to Anne, whose small face was alive with the, with the excitement of the moment. A breathless silence had fallen over the room. Every eye was fixed on the actor, who stood with a small leather-covered edition of As You Like It in his hand. Miss Tab stood by with a pencil and pad. The great tryout was about to begin. Thank you for listening to this chapter of Grace Harlow's Junior Year at High School with me. I hope you return soon for the next one. Have a great day. Bye!